you work with students, obviously, an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Do you think that does still hold, that psychologically students are more left-leaning um, at that age and then yeah. when they get older or when they get a job or, you know... I don't know if, if they it's get to because an... of their heart exactly. It might be because they're not very happy at being at the bottom of the hierarchy, but they are there primarily because they're young. But I also think that the Conservatives have an opportunity to appeal to young people by appealing to elements of psychological well-being, let's say, that aren't normally addressed in the political realm. So um, I think young people are very hungry now, especially the youngest of the young, for a message of personal responsibility and the freedom to make their way in the world and support and encouragement for that. And I've seen that start to happen among the Conservatives in Canada to fair good effect. So, and it's not easy for Conservatives to deliver a message to the young, and but I think one of opening up opportunities for them to live the kind of life I they want to live. Is, they're going to take responsibility. Well, yeah. well, hang on, hang on, all one at a time. Neil first, yeah. then I'll come to so you. I, I think Jordan is right about that, actually, and I've started to notice some younger people coming into the Conservatives in my own uh, constituency, and the shine is definitely coming off uh, Jeremy Corbyn, particularly having done things like said, you know, I'll get rid of all your student debts, and then saying straight after the general election, oh, no, actually, we can't do it. We'd never work out how much it would cost. I mean, that's ridiculous. If you had a bit more of a mainstream leader, I think we would uh, be in more trouble, but I think ultimately people are not going to go for... Mm. Jeremy Corbyn, but that doesn't mean that over the longer term, we as a party don't have a challenge. Right. Let, let's just, be, let's just be careful with our language, because Jeremy Corbyn didn't say, I'll get rid of all your debts yeah. in that exactly. sense. Okay, so right on the front well, of the that, enemy, well, that, that, is, that is exactly no, what those he weren't said. The words, those weren't the words he used. I will deal so with it. You've this, interpreted yeah. it that way. Um, yes, Aisha. I would probably push back a wee bit on what um, Jordan said, because I think one of the things that we saw in the last general election campaign about what motivates young people is not just stuff for themselves. They also have a great concern for things like the environment and um, public services, the health service, and also how we treat people. What are our values yes. in society mm. about being an inclusive society, a tolerant society? I know you hate identity politics, but that actually, you know, matters to quite a lot of young people. And I think the... Um, That's because they haven't been told a better story than that. Well, yet. I think they, they feel what they do in, in their heart at that time, and they want to be sort of kind and inclusive. But I think the struggle, I would say that the two policy areas which, which you have touched upon which unless the Conservatives get some movement on, housing and debt, student debt, mm. it, it is such a big issue for people. And I think particularly on housing, which I think to be fair, no political party has quite sure. cracked what the, the solution is. But the idea that you say to you know a generation, and this is where the capitalism argument is coming into, how can you say to a younger generation, be wedded to capitalism when they have no capital and they have no means of acquiring capital? I actually agree with a lot of that. And I on the environment, I think it's been really impressive the way Michael Gove has taken that issue and run with it. He's you know, banning plastic waste and stopping on the litter accruing in our oceans and, uh, and our streets. So I think that's, that's an important start. But I agree with you about the, the housing point. And we need to, as well as being able to uh, you know, build enough housing, we also need to think about the balance between the rented sector and ownership yeah. and maybe use the tax system to, to yeah. change that balance a bit. So I actually agree with you there. Just finally, I mean, Jordan, you say that actually students and young people ha haven't heard a better story than the one that they have been fed. It's seems up until now. But but actually, if you're looking at the parties, Labour and the Conservatives here, and let's say Democrats and Republicans in America, how do parties tailor a message that has to bridge a lot of different groups in order to win an election outright, in order to get a majority that is needed here, um, without actually having to perhaps tone down some of their core messages? Well, I mean, I do think from my experience talking to young people in droves over the last two years, I think that the the best tack for the Conservatives is to indicate their willingness to open up the, the economic forum to genuine progress for young people and to have them play a part in that. I mean, part of the reason that the leftists are attractive to young people is because they feel that the system is actually stacked against them in a fair competition. And unreasonable housing prices certainly play into that and unreasonable levels of student debt as well. But why should but they have a stake in capitalism when they have no capital? Well, because they're not going to be young forever. And one of the best yeah, predictors of whether or not you have capital is how old you are. So most of the people that are rich are old. 
And you basically trade in your youth you across don't, your you life for age. You don't naturally accrue wealth if, if you don't start with something just because you get older. So well, we you now can have, start with lots well, of things that aren't Well, no, capital. but we now, we now have a situation mm. where people are still having to live with their parents into mm. their sort yeah. of yeah. 30s and 40s because mm. they can't get the money together for, mm. for a deposit. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's also, we started by talking about our cities, and that's a really important point. I think initiatives like the Northern Powerhouse, the Midlands Engine, have been really important in terms of regenerating those big, great cities. Although I would just come in there say that the cuts to local councils in some of these areas have been incredibly sort of damaging to the to the communities All right. as well. Neil, I'm afraid we're going to have to uh, end it there, but thank you very much for coming in. It made America realise that Britain was her real and true friend uh, when they were hard up against it and wanted something, and that no one else in Europe was. There are weak lots, some of them in Europe, you know. Weak. Feeble.